So, uh, hello, can, can you hear me okay? Ah, good. So, um, uh, I am here to talk about uh, my experience and my family's experience sort of down in the trenches of personal archiving. Uh, it's a, a project my dad and I have been working on for, for six years, um, and which I realized in order to compress that into 15 minutes is about a 210,000 time speed up, so I'm going to have to go rather fast here. Um, for, for me, my background, um, I did games back in the 90s. I founded uh, Legit Networks, an advertising uh, company in Boulder. I was a co-founder of Wordnik.com, an online dictionary. Um, and I'm now writing a book about the brain, which is exciting, which has nothing to do with uh, archiving. So instead, I'm going to tell you about this archiving project. Uh, and I'm going to do it in four areas. First, I'm going to tell you the sort of the specs of what it is that we actually did. Um, then I'm going to talk about the technical, geeky, nitty-gritty stuff of the tools we used and all of that, uh, which will sort of flow into me complaining about all the things that didn't work as well as they should have, um, and then wrap up with what the project meant sort of for, for me and my family personally, the effects that it had. So the, the specs, what did, what did we actually do? Um, so about six years ago, I came home from semester break in graduate school, and uh, my dad surprised me showing that he had bought a scanner, and because uh, he had wanted to show his slides to his grandkids, and uh, there were no, uh, he, thought, he knew it was dumb to, buy a, dumb to buy a slide projector, right? So he bought a scanner instead. And he had begun scanning, and I was really happy for him, but also sort of appalled because he was scanning them at like 100 DPI, and he, he couldn't put them in the right order and all this, so I immediately jumped in to, uh, to help. And so then when I came home the next semester break, he had then moved on to his wedding photos, which he had noticed were beginning to fade with whatever technology they were using back then. And uh, having given him those tools, the race was on, and now in the last uh, six years, uh, we've scanned about almost 20,000 photos, geotagged about 20%. Almost all the ones with people in them have been face tagged. Um, we, we did all the, the home movies and audio recordings we've tagged also. There was a cool phase in the 70s where my family was exchanging reel-to-reel -reel tapes as sort of audio uh, letters to each other. Um, and it's given us cool opportunities for me as, as sort of the, the geek in the family, having all the, the faces tagged. Now we can, for anyone in the family, you can immediately pull up all the pictures of them and we have people for their entire lifetime of faces. And you can, so you can do those kind of, uh, you know that guy who took a picture of himself every day for seven years? Uh, you can do that for different people in the family and see how they've aged. It's really, really cool. Uh, that video is not playing. Um, and not, it's not just photos. Uh, some of the really interesting stuff is uh, newspaper articles, like going back to World War II, when my, my uncle was, uh, died in World War II. Uh, some beautiful, beautiful postcards. Uh, lots of report cards from my parents, which is always funny to look back and see. Uh, things which future generations might not understand, like telegrams up there. Um, and great examples of uh, handwriting and, and, and lots of things. So how, how did we actually do it? Of course, we did the obvious, the, the scanner pieces, that HP scanner, moved on to a Canon, found a reel-to-reel -reel player at Salvation Army, uh, had to buy a VHS player off of Craigslist. Um, but the real workhorse, of course, is the, the software, and here it was a real hodgepodge. Um, the, uh, the good news is that almost all of it's free, um, which is, uh, my dad really liked that. Um, uh, Picasa has become our, our workhorse for all of the visual data, and my, my dad is now the Picasa Pro. Uh, we use Audacity for the audio things. Um, Dragon uh, speech recognition, I'll talk about that a bit more in a second. Um, and for a lot of this project, I was living in New York or in Berlin, and so had to do things remotely. And so we used uh, Windows Live Mesh, was really great for syncing the photos between my dad's laptop, my mom's laptop, uh, the computer in the living room, and to my computer over in Germany. And there's some cool hacks you can do to make Mesh play with Picasa and, and make it work. Um, and logmein.com is a great service in general for pro providing tech support to uh, relatives in your family. So I could just log in uh, and take control of their computer and install updates and new versions, and sometimes even while they were asleep. Uh, and uh, and they, would just, they said it was wonderful. They would just wake up and then software would work, and I would leave a big like, a notepad message up with what I'd done during the night. Uh, 
and then mosey.com for backups in addition to all the backups, uh, implicit backups with, with live mesh. Uh, so when my dad was back on that HP scanner, we were using the HP software that came with it, and it had a button to add captions. And it turns out that with this software, when it, when it adds a caption, it just paints like t the text onto the image, like destroys underlying pixels and puts the text over. And so I, I came home with just appalled that several years of photos had been sort of marred up this way. And of course, the text is not searchable or indexable or anything. Um, I, HP, I'm sorry, I, I still hold that grudge against you. Um, <laughs> and uh, that's when we moved to uh, Picasso. And right at the time when we made this switch, uh, my dad had had surgery on his, his fingers and uh, he was never a great typist anyways. And I, I did the math, it was gonna take like 20 years to caption all these photos. And he was more than willing to do it. He just was going, going away. But uh, uh, I, being the, the technical support for this project, tried out, uh, uh, naturally speaking, the speech recognition software. And it worked remarkably well. And so for several months, uh, my mom would complain that uh, her husband spent all day in the office talking to himself. And he just went through and basically relived his life, uh, sometimes consulting my mom's diary or other uh, resources to uh, add captions and dates to all, of, all the photos. Uh, another tool which was sort of a surprise hit with my family was things just like Google Street View, where uh, people in the family loved looking at old photographs and then seeing, oh, how does that look now? Um, so you can see what was a church is now not a church, things like that. Um, and really cool, lately, uh, I've sort of been geeking out with using Mechanical Turk to transcribe a lot of the textual documents. Um, uh, I started off actually having them transcribe some of my diaries, and it was really amazing to see. Uh, I left a field where the person who was working on the transcription could just leave a comment. And so you'd get this random feedback from people of like, oh, that's so exciting, or very romantic, or um, like, I'm so sad to hear about that. <laughs> it's really, really great. <laughs> um, another, another sort of hit was when face tagging came out. It was a couple of years ago, I think, when iPhoto and Picasso and all those guys got into that business. And again, my, my parents and older relatives were blown away by how cool this was, and it launched another project with my dad spending some months tagging everyone. Uh, which is now great, so it was my uncle's birthday and we needed some uh, pictures of him and one second we had several hundred pictures of him. Uh, but tagging, whoop, here we go. It leads into some problems, so now, now I'll just start to complain. Uh, the, the tagging in Picasa is tied to your Gmail contacts, which maybe is great for pictures you're taking right now, but great, great uncle Hilbert does not have an email address since he died in 1920. Um, and so to, to make it work, I had to do this elaborate hack of from Ancestry.com exporting a GEDCOM file, the standard, writing a script which converts that into an Outlook sort of standard file, upload that to Gmail, which then could show up in Picasa and my dad could then tag, you know, dead people. Um, very long process, which should be a lot easier. Um, and then along with that, um, this whole concept of people is very impoverished in these systems. So in Picasso, a person is a name, a nickname, and an email address, which doesn't quite capture you know, the people that <laughs> in my family. Uh, other obvious problems, we wanted to share these photos, so a great place to put them might be on Picasso web online, only you can't have dates before 1970. <laughs> Someone wanted to save a few bytes of storage too many. Uh, uh, and, then, and then the classic problem, which I saw we talked about uh, last year at the conference of uh, uh, Facebook or Ancestry has a great rich concept of who a person is with uh, you know, date of birth and stories and such, but there's no way to get the data out. And I actually emailed the people at Ancestry of, you know, if we record these stories, um, can I get a copy of it? And they said, no, you, know, you can right click to save images, but there's no way to get audio out. It's like, okay, I'm not gonna give you that information. Uh, so, which leads into a little pitch for a software project I've been working on the last, uh, well, a, a year and a, intensely for the last few months is an open source project based on uh, Drupal and lots of other uh, components which would allow you to log in with any of the common logins, 
uh, do the Mechanical Turk transcription. Very important, have wiki-style collaboration. Um, anyone in the family, right, should be able to add metadata. You know, why can't my brother be geotagging photos at the same time my dad is face tagging? Um, and I'm running out of time, so move, move on. But if, you, if you're interested in help or you know someone who would want to help programming or otherwise, uh, please get in touch with me. Uh, so I'm getting running out of time, so I will wrap up with some quick personal impacts of this uh, thing. Uh, the killer app of digital archiving, I would say, is the screensaver. Um, <laughs> Uh, we, like I said, we had the, uh, the archive synced to their living room computer. So when my parents, for example, just turn on Pandora or something to listen to the radio, after a few minutes the screensaver kicks on, and my mom confesses that she will often just get sucked in watching the pictures flash by and sort of get relive her life and jump from memory to memory and things that, that she forgot. Um, also, you're very useful that you can carry your entire life with you with a netbook. Uh, when my parents visited me in Berlin last year, everywhere we went, my dad had his, his computer and could bring up the pictures from when he was there and comment on what's different and how the trees have grown, et cetera. And we were able to recreate some shots from then and now, which was really fun. Here we go. Uh, also, it was great for me to rediscover people um, in my family that didn't know about. My, my uncle died in World War II. Uh, in Corregidor, and we have all these, uh, there's a whole mess of, of data from it, newspaper clippings and pictures. And reading through it, it was amazing to see, you know, watch him fall in love, he met this girl, they get married, they get separated, a month later the Japanese attack, he's in Corregidor. Um, and this last letter he writes, and based on the date, we know historically it had to have been in this mailbag that General MacArthur snuck out on a PT boat uh, a day before, the, uh, before it fell to the Japanese. So you get this really intense uh, connection to it. And also, sort of on the negative side, learning what a different time things were back then. This was a birthday card that my dad received for his eighth birthday. You know, very insensitive, um, would never fly today. It was really uh, interesting for me to sort of get in touch with this was accepted back then. And um, also discovering from the personal side that you don't always, well, not everyone has the same reaction. Uh, one member of my extended family, upon uh, seeing all these photos, it brought up some really bad memories from a certain event and actually sort of provoked kind of a crisis and a, and a breakdown. So it was interesting that... Uh, it's not always good to have access to all these photos. And <laughs> getting right to the end, um, they, they say uh, Carl Jung has this theory that uh, one of the tasks of aging for people is to review their life and find out what it means and to come to terms with it. And I think with my dad especially and my parents, like going through and just process of archiving and adding the captions really was part of this process of um, coming to grips with one's life. And lastly, it was a great project to do with my dad and to get to know him as an adult. So that's it. I've talked about what we did, the technical aspects. I bitched and whined a bit and the uh, personal impacts. And if you have any questions or want to help out with the open source project uh, from coding, please get in touch with me. Thank you.